always when I teach is not, I don't want to be deaf by PowerPoint. <laughs> I will teach, I will talk. You have the opportunity for some things you want to say and maybe challenge or things of that nature. I'm not going to say I know it all. I'm not, uh, I don't have a PhD. I'm not a doctor. I haven't been to Africa, but uh, through research, through understanding, through biblical interpretation, uh, I present to you uh, what I understand to be the truth of, of African um, influence in the Bible. Amen. Amen. Uh, any questions before we get started? So feel free uh, uh, to move about, stand up. It is, it's informal. I'm informal. I'm even dressed informal today. So you can be at, relaxed. You don't have to dress like me or what have you, but the next couple of weeks I might do something different. Because this is this is a different time. So you can relax, stand up, walk around, uh, clap, and say man, everything you want to do. I'm not I'm not that uptight about it. All right, get my bearings here. And So when we look at look into the Bible, we're looking to the Word of God. We we always start in in the beginning. But we look at the world now. The world now is so different than it was two thousand years ago, six thousand years ago, uh, when the events of the Bible took place. Totally different. Uh, people groups, cultures have have expanded to new areas, new geographies. Uh, they've mixed between each other, uh, and so the resulting is uh, different cultures, light cultures, different looks, light looks, everybody knows everybody, uh, uh, we've pretty much explored the whole world, uh, land masses that is, we know where it all is, even though uh, geologically there are new ones being formed, whether they're this small or the size of a small island, we know that the earth continues to live. Um, and so, in order to interpret the Bible, one of the things you have to have is cultural context. If I'm talking about Paul uh, and some of his writings to uh, the early Christian churches in Rome and Ephesus and Corinth, I have to understand the culture of that time. I have to understand Roman culture. I have to understand what the people looked like, what the people acted like, what they believed, how the women were accepted or not accepted, or, or what rules was on them, the children how old they were before they were able to be able to claim adulthood and things of that nature. So cultural context helps us to understand why uh, the Bible is written the way it is. And so when you look at the Bible, you get back to the early context, you know that Africa played a big part. And we'll go through specifically some of those things, oh, that's good. specifically some of those things that uh, you talk about when you talk about um, Africa and the influence in the early Bible. Um, and so when we look at this and we start to talk about Africa, when you start to talk about Africa, a lot of times it makes different cultures uneasy. But to talk about Africa is not really to talk about uh, focusing on one race and making one race, as we say race, superior. Really Africa is the foundation of the world in its entirety. Uh, as we understand it now, it is the origin of things, according to the Bible, it is the origin of things, and if we're looking at the Bible, it is Africa that gave us our start. And so we're not talking about the superiority of race, we're talking about the origins of humanity and the early influences of humanity, the cultural center from where we all branched out and created our own lives until the point we came back together and began to do things uh, whether we wanted to or not with um, our cultures. I'm going to move along. I'll get to talk at one point. So I want to do this in an hour each section. So uh, so for us, for for, uh, for black people, uh, when we talk about uh, Africa, and also for uh, Arab people, as we call them now, we separate them now. If we want to use modern racial connotations, what does it mean to go back and, and find the, uh, uh, the African influence? 
things. Well, you're going back and rediscovering something that may have been hidden because of cultural uh, misappropriation, because of uh, uh, certain countries conquering certain countries, uh, and things of that nature. And also to regain and learn the importance and uh, contributions of people of color. That a lot of times we might have images in our head of what certain people look like. And then that can, image could be uh, in contrast to the truth of what people look like in that early day. And so you can see Adam and Eve and think they look a certain way based off of what was in your children's Bible or what was in, but really they meant that probably was not how they looked. And so you have to understand it. So uh, uh, image is important, right? Image is important. If I can see myself in something, I can find uh, importance of myself. If I don't see myself uh, visually in any type of important uh, uh, history or images or paintings or movies or things of that nature, then I can't relate. But if I constantly see myself uh, through the eyes of, of some of the more gang warfare or, or humor or, or things of that nature, then I start to identify myself with those images. If I'm constantly bombarded by a by, uh, public enemy, which is a part of the culture, but if that's all I see, then that's what I would think, unless I'm trained otherwise, that I must uh, follow after. But if I look at uh, that in the context of uh, the Cosby Show or a different world, then there's a broader spectrum to know that the culture doesn't just include uh, 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 if you want to call it gang banging or whatever, even though there was some genius in public enemy, um, you won't see culture uh, always. All of us didn't live the culture of boys in the hood. Absolutely. Some of us lived a different world culture. Yes. And so we have to be careful of the images that we accept uh, in our society. Not all of us, not all of Detroit is what people want to make it to be. It's not all of, of, of those cultures, just like it is with uh, Arabs. Not every uh, Arab wants to fly planes into a building, right? They're all there are Arab Christians, there are Arab Muslims, there are some they don't believe in anything. Uh, so we can't relate uh, race, skin color, and those things because actually skin color is only uh, important as it gets closer to where we're living now. Back in, back in biblical days, it wasn't race. It was uh, cultures. You were named by where you were from. Saul of Tarsus gave you an idea of the culture that he lived in. Uh, the same as uh, the, the cities of ancient world. And we'll get into that when we talk about these areas. They were named after who founded the cities. And so we have to understand that um, that culture for, for looking in this, it helps us to understand that yes, we were involved and what God was doing in the world. And we can't say that we were left out and that it just came to us recently in the last 200 years. No, actually it was in the beginning. And then it changed and then it came back. And so we have to understand, but the importance of each culture or each people group, each family, families have similar looks, similar appearances, they move to similar areas. And so you, if you understand the world through the context of cultures or families or people groups, then your 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 skin tone, uh, your, you know, in Africa we you know watch the movie Hotel Rwanda where uh, one group would judge another group not by skin color because they all had the same. They're all brown, darker brown skinned people, but by the width of their nose. Yeah. And so you 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 see how we find differences in order to separate ourselves. And then let's be honest. I remember back in the day it was a it was light skin thing versus dark skin thing. Back in the late 80s, Chris Williams and all them dudes and then came back and said, and our coach black is back. And I, you see how we differentiate ourselves by appearance when in actuality we're more alike than different. Not just within what you would call African American culture, but even in all cultures of the world. So for for blacks and Arabs and people that are uh, uh, even white people, we, we discover and uh, use those contexts, not to offend, but as what we use today. Yeah. Uh, we discover uh, the early biblical history and, and, and what we have as cultural similarities, all right? 
Um, and, and we learn the importance of all of our contributions, whether we're dark skin, medium skin, or fair skin, or light skin, all right? And, and the key point, if I had a subject, a sub-subject to say for today, is that the world is not black and white. Amen. 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 It's not. Amen. It's not black and then draw a thin line and it's white. Even in here, it's not right. black and it's not white, right? Because we have darker skin, we have medium skin. When you deal with, we have judges, right? Judges have to do what? Judge whether or not somebody deserves, deserves the most, a slap on the hand, or to be left free. Why? Because all speeding is not speeding. It's not black and white. Yes, I was over the limit, but there's always a but in the world. You know what I'm saying? There's always a reason. Everything can't be discerned as a checkbox. Do you love me? Yes and no. Sometimes yes and no. Yes. I love you, but we're just not good together, all right? You see what I'm saying? So everything is not black and white. You see what I'm saying? And so the same thing with cultures. It's not black and white. You will find out more. Let me get on. I spent 15 minutes with the intro, introduction. Um, it's only recently that we use skin color to determine who people are. And really, skin color, uh, the uses of skin color can be any further from uh, an accurate representation. Um, now, we have to be true to history. We understand now we live in a time period where uh, European nations dominate the culture, dominate the world, even in places that are not European. People, more and more people are speaking English, even in Africa, even in Arab countries. And so because of the prowess of military, the development of guns and strategy and exploration, uh, Europeans have, domin have gained an upper uh, hand in the culture, in the finances, in, the, in just how the world is run, through America, through Europe, through Russia, through all those, it was, Russia's not a European country, but uh, through those what we'll call Eurocentric uh, nations, uh, the world is operating right now. Hadn't always been that way. Muslim nations had control for a while. Uh, the Moors out of Africa conquered Europe for a while. Uh, the reason why you have differences between uh, uh, Italian and, and Spanish, Spain, the southern part of Europe, and the northern part of Europe. Because of not just uh, uh, a color, but because of a culture, and because of how uh, things have mixed over time, and things of that nature. Why uh, uh, Central American people look the way they do, and, 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 and have a Spanish, but I can walk and, and go in there, and they look at me funny because I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> And that's, and that's the way it is. I'm, and and, and I'm, I'm interested in this because I even did Ancestry.com. And I told y'all about this, but I'll repeat it again. Interested in my lineage because I'm a Harrison Ford. That name comes from Scotland. So I, without Ancestry, I was like, okay, at least some Scot maybe some Scottish blood, you know, definitely not 100% African. Uh, so maybe some Scottish blood in there. And then I said, I gotta be African. Look at my mom. She's darker skinned. Uh, my dad was. You know, I jokingly say he showed up at school one day. Dude standing next to him, he said, "Man, you damn whiter than I am. What is he telling him?" And that's the way it was. And so, you know, that's the way I just kind of over the years researched, looked back, and even looked at pictures and found out that I am got Harrison blood in uh, the the slave plantation on at the time. Um, my grandfather's ancestor, my grandmother's ancestor. He had children by both slaves. Yeah. Later on, they met each other, and of course, it caused some conflicts and things. But the result of ancestors that 55% of, if you believe ancestors, 55% of my DNA came from Benin, if I'm saying it right, um, Cameroon, that almost the hook part of Africa. Whereas 45% came from Scotland, Ireland, uh, some Jewish. So you can imagine I'm a mixture of two, uh, several cultures, but if you want to say races, a uh, uh, couple races. So am I sure? No, I love it. That's why I say it. I love the fact that I'm just not, I would love it if I was pure, if you want to say pure, but who is pure? 
in terms of, you know what I'm saying? And so we have to understand it. So I, I appreciate that. So I, today I'm, I can celebrate African American history. Yeah. And then tomorrow I can say, they can take our lives, but they don't take <laughs> You know, and that's how it is. Because I can celebrate and I can take that. And, it, and, and a lot of us, if we did that research, will find that we have, uh, you know, even Native American, we all like to claim the things of that nature. So that's just how the world is. And, and you'll be surprised to say that's how the world was in biblical times. Amen. So we'll look at that. Let me get out of it. So uh, to do that, uh, it is up to the church more so than any other organization, more so than the government, the president, than anybody else, to promote cultural unity. And I say cultural unity. Not racial unity because racism is a thing that's used to divide us, principally. But cultural unity amongst us all. All right. That was the introduction in 20 minutes. And so let's go back to the beginning. And uh, let's look at in the beginning, right? God created the heaven and earth. Uh, you can go to Genesis 1. When you get to Genesis chapter number 2, uh, and verses 8, um, assuming everybody has their Bible, uh, let's go. Let me see if I can pull that up for you. Genesis 2. Two, I think it's 8 through 14. And feel free to stop me and make a comment or anything anytime you need to. Alright, it said the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put man, man whom he had uh, formed. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was dead. He put man who he had formed. Right. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first Isaac, that is, which compassed the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is Delam and Onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. Uh, the same as it that it passes the whole land of Ethiopia. I'm going to read it and come back. And the name of the third river is Adekel. And that is which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. Amen. So when we look at uh, this early description of the beginning lands, what are we looking at? We're looking at uh, the rivers that check them real quick. The rivers that can give us a boundary to understand where the original land where Adam and Eve or the original people. Now, mind you, Adam and Eve Eve lived for a hundred years. Average person lived for a hundred years. How many children would they have? Right? How many children would they have? And so the land was populated, but it started with Adam and Eve. And so when we look at it, the first one he talks about is, um, is Pisces. Uh, that one, the theories as to which one it is, um, but no river that we have on our current maps can lead you to Pison. I'll show you some possibilities and some thoughts later on. The second one is uh, Gihon Gihon, which is the Nile River. We all know the Nile River travels through uh, Egypt yeah. and down into Ethiopia. All right. The third one was Hidekel, which we know as the Tigris River. That one uh, flows from, uh, I think it's the Mediterranean, on into Babylon, correct? on into what is modern day Iraq, Iran area. Uh, well, we just recently had those uh, in what, 1992 or whatever, Desert Storm. All right, and the last one is Euphrates, okay? So if we look at those four rivers and get an idea of what uh, 
See if I can prove this up. Give an idea of what area, and, and if I get this map to help out, we're talking about. So, can y'all see that pretty well? But okay, I don't know if I needed to project it today or not. But if you look at the land, um, it talks about Assyria. And if you can see up here towards the top, Assyria's label uh, north toward, uh, uh, toward Russia. Russia will be up to the northeast. But you see the two rivers, Euphrates and the Tigris River, all right? And then you see all the way down across the Red Sea, uh, down into the land of Egypt, right? You see the Nile. Now, I talked earlier about the, the one that is named Pison. Two theories that I've heard about that. One is that it is underneath the sea here. Now, we've got to understand that the land of this time, we try to look at a current map, right? And try to make out what the land looked at back then. Well, what major event happened? that probably caused more of a geological shift than anything? The flood. The flood, the flood happened, so anytime you go out in your backyard and take your uh, water hose and spray it at the ground, what happens? You're going to dig holes, you're going to create caverns, look at the Grand Canyon and all this stuff. Over the years, Colorado River has really cut and beat over that. And the flood even had, um, when, when, when there's a flood, there's a stirring up of what? Silt and, and dirt. And when the water goes away, what happens? That they're settled and compacts, right? So the land now looks different. And so that final river, Pison, it could be under, and some people believe it's under uh, the Gulf here. Uh, see, that right there. And then others believe that it actually is a river that runs underneath, uh, and these are theories, underneath Jerusalem, right? Uh, uh, underground river because rivers don't necessarily all flow above. We dig wells because they're underground. We call them aquifers, right? Um, and so, but you look at how each of those, um, each of those rivers. I keep going that way, but each, each of those rivers are flowing back toward this area. All right, from here and from there. And he said that there is a river, one river. But they flow out and branch out. So you got two to which would be generally north and two to south. So you can say that the land of Eden would be uh, the, the river basin of the Nile up toward the river basin of the Tigris and Euphrates, which we call this area Saudi Arabia. Um, but uh, you can see where the early civilization is. What land on the whole earth has more trouble? and more problems than that land right there. Jerusalem is a multicultural land now. You got shrines for Jews, Christians, and Muslims in Jerusalem. But this land's been contested, it's fought over, been fought over for centuries. But could it be that that was the land that originally started uh, the initial, uh, uh, man's initial uh, walk on earth? All right? All right. So we look at that and we understand that that is uh, what be called the land of Eden. Now, of course, God said he hid the garden of Eden. So a lot of times we think the garden of Eden is a land. But no, there's a land of Eden. But then if you look at the first uh, scripture that I read, it says, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Now, a lot of people, and I got a chart that someone drew. Um, if you do go eastward in Eden, uh, you use a multitasking here. If you go eastward in Eden, this is the uh, Persian Gulf, uh, Babylon, uh, Baghdad, whatever you want to call it. And this is a chart somebody made. Um, of course, the rivers are all. But a lot of people believe eastward of Eden would be um, 
Babylon or the Persian Gulf, that area. Um, that's new to me. I'd always assumed or thought that Eden would be uh, where Jerusalem is now. Because you look at that, you look at some of the cities uh, surrounded, the old ancient cities surrounding Jerusalem, they have the names of some of the earliest men. And I didn't get a chart of that. Um, also the fact that everything revolves around that geography. Uh, Abraham, when he went up, he went up on Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah is where Jerusalem sits today. Jerusalem, the central point. And so people have different philosophies of that. But the context is that when you look at the earliest people of the Bible, and you look at the earliest mention of the Bible, we're looking at what we call today the uh, Middle East. And i got to move along. Um, and so let me get back to my notes. And so we have to find that if these were you know, excuse me for a second. These were the people, the earliest people of the earth, then These were the earliest people of Earth. We understand that they were um, from this area. From this area. Now, archaeology would tell us that the earliest remains of man are found in what's called uh, down in Ethiopia. And so, if we if we find if we look at the people, think about when you think African, when you think Middle Eastern, the people that are what we now have. I heard this term in modern day, uh, brown skinned people, right? brown-skinned people. And so the origin of these people uh, uh, comes from uh, the edge of Africa over into what we call the Middle East. But when you look at Africa, we look at Africa. Africa uh, has been called African only recent, Africa recently, right? Its original name was called uh, Kibu Lan, or Kibu Lan, meaning mother of mankind or Garden of Eden. It was only recently that it was called Africa or the land of Ham. Africa in modern times uh, has been separated from the area that we call the land of Eden only by the Suez Canal. Culturally, uh, uh, early times, physically, it was no separation and all of that was considered one land. Uh, the people settled in by the rivers, uh, because you have to have water for life. And so you find that people um, uh, stayed in that area for generations. Now we understand that when we deal with Africa, Africa over the years has been uh, distorted. Distorted. It's been, uh, the reason why you separate Africa from the Middle East is because you want to divide a distinct separation. And so even when we look at the history of or, or, or Africa as a land, uh, we don't even see it true to size on our maps. And I want to show you this. When you look at most maps, this is a map from geology.com. All right. You see how Canada and Russia Looks so massive, right? Look like they would swallow Africa, right? Okay. Now, somebody said, well, that's right. No, not necessarily. You don't understand the earth is curved. But if you do actual land mass uh, survey of it, this is the map that you get in uh, school, right? Granted, uh, most of the books are written from a Eurocentric point of view. And and so you see everything from a certain line is stretched, but everything below is a little shrunk. So it looks like the middle of the earth is somewhere right here. But this is taking up one half, and this is taking up half of a half. All right? But that's not true to size. 
not to the size. Actually, when you look at Africa, look how big Russia is, right? Y'all can pick out Russia, right? Anything pretty much north of this white line here, right? On your maps, just as an example, that's what it looks like on a map, but in reality, that's how big it is in proportion. Maybe about half that size. Okay? So if you come from a land that takes up most of the earth, you would naturally think that greater, they're bigger, they're formidable, they're great, bigger. Canada, I mean, Canada's huge. Bigger, formidable, great, insignificant. Even our study is, 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 but that's the map we get in school. But if you take land mass, You take Africa, and if you can see this closely, China is just red at the bottom. <laughs> United States it takes up this side of it. Spain, France, Germany, Italy, Eastern Europe, India, and the UK all fit within Africa. That's how large Africa is. Now what does that do to your mindset if you constantly see you're this and everybody else is that? Mentally, you're this, and everybody else is that. So I'm not putting motives in people's minds, but I'm telling you um, that's what it is. When you want to actually talk about the true size of Africa, Africa is huge. Mm -hmm. wow. It's huge. It's not as big as what... Now, when they say Asia, they take Russia, China, and the Middle East and call it Asia. If you go look up Asia, it comes Asia Minor. All of that, and, and it's not as big as that. But that is a formidable size continent. And so you minimize that. That's just a reflection of how uh, society or having a, a you, and like again, it's not, I don't want this to be racial. It's not racial. It's European centric that your importance is great. When Daniel in the Bible was captured, right? Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, what did they do? They took the culture and they even took their name, all right? They were captured by Babylonians. People in Iraq, Iran was, the Jews were captured by Iraq and Iran. Took away the name, his name ain't Daniel, you know what I'm saying? His name ain't uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, excuse me. Their, their, their Jewish names were stripped and changed. And so it's just something that we do when we conquer a nation is to make sure we take the name because it takes their identity and even their culture were grafted in. Even when uh, uh, the Greeks had gods, right? Rome conquered Greece. And what did they do? Took their gods and renamed them as their own. So it's a culture thing to keep power over people, to change things to your liking, right? So that you can understand and have power over them, not just through military, but through education and everything else, right? And so we have to understand that. But Africa was included with uh, the, uh, I think that's more correct. But Africa was included with what we call Saudi Arabia and the Middle East uh, in terms of culture. And, and we'll see that more so. I'm going to wrap this up in about 20 minutes and we'll continue with uh, next week we want to talk about actual people in the Bible. But give me your background of things that happen to uh, change who we are. And so now if you want to suppress or subvert or keep people down, you make sure you accentuate your stories and then minimize other stories. And so the Bible is no different. When, when you had preachers on plantations, the master had a preacher. They made sure that his preacher would preach, slaves obey your master. That's in the Bible. It's true. But who does that benefit? When the slaves had a preacher that was in there with them, they would go down by the river, out of sight of the master, have their own little time. They would do what? Preach 
God is a healer. God is a deliverer. It's going to get better. He loves you and all that stuff. Why? Because the people needed that in order to survive. Yeah. And so they would sing, let's go down by the river. We heard that before. But all these different types of songs to say, we're going down here. We're going to have our own church. We're going to kick up some dirt and all that stuff. Uh, and so you can see the difference. You can use the Bible to, uh, you know, we saw a recent in the movie, the book of Eli. Why did he want that book? Because he wanted to be in control of other people. And so you can use the word of God, you can use God to control people, or you can use it to liberate people. And understanding of this is that we're all included in this. This isn't to say that black people need to be in charge. No, this isn't to say Arabs need to be in charge. Or this is saying we all originated from here. All right? And that we're all uh, in this together. And if we go through the next uh, couple of uh, next couple of lessons, you'll see how it all fits together. But I'm giving you a pre uh, look at it in terms of uh, culture and in terms of how we live now versus what the truth of it is. All right? Let me clean up here a little bit and we'll move on. Any questions? Any comments? Take this time. All right. All right. So that's what we understand. Now, if we get into... Um, the uh, yeah, let me go here. We get into the people of Africa. What's was mentioned in Africa? We talked about the Suez Canal separating Africa from the Middle East, but culturally they were all one. Uh, now it's a little bit of a difference between uh, uh, cultures, more so now that we can distinct, but they're still one people. All right? Ethiopia and Egypt are very important to early history. We all know that the Jews lived in Egypt. 400 years. Now, if I live in Egypt 400 years, I'm going to glean some of their cultural, yeah. right? I'm going to probably intermarry some, right? And so I'm going to get a lot of Egypt in me. I might even, I'm probably even going to have their language, right? If I move into another country for a few months, I'm going to pick up their language, right? And so the Egyptian culture and the Hebrew culture, Hebrew wasn't a nation, it was a people group, right? It was Abraham and his son, right? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, their people group. When Jacob got to the point of where he couldn't sustain himself where he was living, he decided to go to Egypt where God had blessed, given a vision. Joseph was already there, and they were able to live in peace in, in Goshen. But they were a part of Egypt. They paid taxes, they worked for them, intermingled, and all that stuff. Um, so Egypt and Ethiopia are very important. Ethiopia, now we see Ethiopia. Just since I said Ethiopian, what do you think of? Everybody smile, because you think of, uh, what was it like, Savage Jones or something like that? Uh, all the aid all that we that That's what you see, right? Now, when you think of Egypt, what do you think of? Rich. rich. Pharaoh, rich. All right? Ethiopia is mentioned in the Bible around 44, 45 times. 40 plus times. Egypt is mentioned in the Bible more than 100 times. Right? These are actual places. Now, Egypt in early Bible was not this. They didn't separate into geographical boundaries. It was that area. And, and really, Ethiopia and Egypt were really one region. They were northern, southern. Later on, they got divided up. But they were really uh, uh, one area of the Bible. And so they are very important into the early history uh, of uh, civilization as well as biblical history. Amen? Amen. And so, uh, when you think about it, and even this past couple weeks, um, you think about it, the people of Egypt were um, a brown-skinned people. Correct? Mm -hmm. The people of e brown to dark-skinned people. The people of Ethiopia um, or brown to dark skinned people, if you want to put that distinction in there. We can all agree to that, right? Now, over the course of time, we try to make uh, Ethiopia and the northern part of Africa into southern Europe. But that's not the case. Even just in the last couple of weeks on the Today Show, uh, what's his name? Josh Gates, um, if I got his name correct, showed a bust of Nefertiti who appeared to be Caucasian instead of brown skin. 
Caucasian with a, a dusty appearance rather than uh, brown skin. I think I have that somewhere. Um, but if we know the opportunity or know the understanding of the day, uh, we know that, that cannot possibly be correct. And so, like again, living in the Eurocentric, we tend to put God in our image. We tend to put good people in our image. Uh, and so it's just, you know, that's not accurate by any means. Now, I'm not cultural. He got his reasons. He said it's accurate. He looked at the mummy. He did a 3D scan. And this is it. And he came out. This is his interpretation. He says it's accurate. The, the, you know. But I think accuracy ought to be defined in the terms of what people have identified themselves as. Correct? So we're looking at the Egyptian people. How did the Egyptian people see themselves? Now, obviously they had a variety of colors at their, at their disposition. You see gold, white, brown, black, blue, red. So they had a good, a good set of inks work with. But when they colored themselves, but you notice something too though? It wasn't even racial. Look at the individual all the way on the left. Dark skin, right? Yeah. Yeah. Look at the people in the middle. Brown. Look at the person on the right. Put my hand up there. You see what I'm saying? Yes. It wasn't racial. It was shades. It was different people. And so you see how they looked at themselves and uh, this is an image of King Tut and his wife. Okay? How they drew themselves. This is what, I can't remember what movie this was. This is what Nefertiti looked like. I can't remember the name. See, it's just nothing that quick. Same thing. Look at shades. They could have just painted everybody the same color, but you got light, medium, darker, and it was across the board. But it's even in recent history that we come up with the distinction and drawing a line between black and white, but it was for everybody. It was an everybody. Uh, religion. Some of the earliest sculptures of Nefertiti, right? She's on the right. Here. This gives you an understanding of how they place themselves or what they they saw or how they drew themselves. Now, I'm not talking religion yet because y'all know I've preached a sermon about their gods and so you see some of that imagery, even the snake on our head being watched and things of that nature. But these are the early uh, cases and examples. I'm going to move on in about 10 minutes. Early cases or, or examples of how they saw it. And why, why did it alarm? And people went off about this. And somebody said, well, I don't see the difference. But why did it alarm people when they saw this? If I can magnify this a little bit more. It's because we see a difference. You know, when I first moved out here, I had my mindset about what was this and what was right and all that stuff. And, and people from here educated me. And it toned me down as to how I felt. And stuff don't offend me as much. But what offended more black people in America was that the base tone of this person is Caucasian with a uh, sort of brown highlights. You want to put it that way? Mm -hmm. And so when we see this, we see the same thing as happening with Elizabeth, you know, and things of that nature. But what we see on the right is a, a thoroughly brown skinned person. They look different to us. Somebody said, well, I don't see the difference, but they look different to us. Dress, head, scarf, everything may look the same, but they look different to us. And people have some derogatory things to say that I won't repeat, but they look different to us. But that's what we uh, endeavor and endure if we're Daniel in Babylon or if we're African.
African American in a Eurocentric world. But we understand that through hieroglyphs and through ancient history that um, we believe them to look different. So let's look at what people in Egypt look like today. I'm going to try to close with this. Look a lot different, right? Even these two. Yeah. Those are variety. But when they represented on the hieroglyphs, now I had to screen these. I hope I screened them well. Because uh, some, well, when you get to Ethiopia, That's what, you see the difference? How they all can be represented? Now, what they would teach you is that there was Ham, Sham, and Japheth. And I bought into it, but it's not true. Ham, Sham, and Japheth. So Ham is, is this guy in the upper left. Sham would be the rest. And Japheth, well, you know, you could say Japheth was there. Maybe so. But they, you, you look at how people oriented themselves. The sons of Japheth went north into Greece and Rome. Ham went uh, south into Africa. Sham went uh, east into Saudi Arabia. But in Saudi Arabia, in these areas, they were all there. And so you got a whole mixture of how everybody looked. So one person can't say it's, and it's just like it is politically. One person can't say the Middle East is mine. Because we were all there in Ham, Sham, and Japheth. Now they're trying to, and, and, and this is one person, I saw this, I was like, you're doing exactly what I'm talking about. Let me continue talking, and I'm going to bend it on that picture. Um, but the mixture of the way people look in that area. If we go to modern day Ethiopia, we, what do we see? We see, uh, let me close out, start over, I've got too much over. All right, those are Ethiopians. Any any comments? Any yes, no? You crazy? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have something. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Well, there's also. I mean, you got to think about it this way. Noah's sons were his sons, right. so they so they likely were similar in some manners and different in some manners because they, you know. Some of them look more like their mother, some of them more like their father, some of them more more in between. Yeah. Okay. It's more likely that the, there's another theory that they have called, um, I know this isn't the, usually a word to use in church, but it's called microevolution as opposed to macro, which is what is taught in schools. Right. Microevolution states that people have the ability to change depending upon their surroundings over a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. their, their, their bodies actually adjust, their melanin levels change to, so that they can adapt to the area that they've moved to. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that's more likely. I do too. Yeah. I do too. Um, because if you go, and, I, and, I'm a, and this might not be the most scientific, I don't claim to have all the scientific degree, but you know it's during winter, it's, it's how, how, how warm is it out there? About 50, 60? We out there going, man, it feels good out there today. Why? Because we didn't have 20 or 30 degree temperature. Yeah. But what is it? It's because we were adjusted to one thing, but the change brought about another adjustment. But in the summertime, it's that's still cold. That's what he just said. Yeah. You know, when, my, when our parents come out here, mm -hmm. and it's 40 or 50 degrees, they're just freezing. Yeah. Yeah. And don't y'all have them? But in the summertime, if it's 50 degrees and we're used to 80, yes. oh, God, it's cool. Yes. And that might be, not be as, as strong uh, a point than anything, but our bodies do adjust yeah. and change. And you think about our, our blood thickens and thins out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so we get used to it. So it's not necessarily, and, and, and let me jump. I think, I think our Heavenly Father made our bodies dynamic enough for that to be mm -hmm. possible. Yeah. I really believe so. And this is the theory people want you to believe. Noah got three sons, Ham, Sham, and Japheth. 
And so you see Ham, and I don't know if I can zoom in more. That's what they want you to believe, but you got one man and one woman producing three sons, right? There's no way. God didn't do any miracle, <laughs> anything like that, to make them come out and say, I'm going to populate the earth with three, three guys. No, it was probably, you know, I didn't know the term like you knew it, but it was probably the fact that they adjusted to the surroundings that they were at, micro, you want to call it mi micro, 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 micro not, boom, there it is, let's go. Well, micro means that you that the individual changes from the same species. Mm -hmm. at, macro means like you're going from one species to another and actually, you know, becoming something completely yeah. different. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that's what theories have been in the past. So in the process of doing that, and this is what I was going to show you, you have to understand um, that there were migratory patterns. Can I tell you a little bit? To where people are. And I'm not saying this is accurate. I, I don't think I don't think it's the one I plan to use. But the purple is the descendants of Shem. The green is the descendants of Japheth. And so people say, boom, boom, boom. There's your Caucasian, there's your, I think it's Mongoloid, and then there's your Nubian or whatever, or, or black. Um, and then the descendants of Ham. But I didn't look at this to say, oh, that's exactly where they went. I looked at this to say, okay, all right, we know Kush is Ethiopia. We know Put, Put, Put is Libya. Um, we can trace that to the cities. You can trace to Ball, Goma, uh, Gomer. Um, I had Askenaz as more as Germany, but they have it over here um, to Goma. And the reason why these are important because they're listed later in prophecy, end time prophecy. These uh, Askenaz, uh, Magog, Gog, all of them you hear in prophecy. But what I really took from this was you see green, purple, and brown all in this area. Because of why? That's where we all came from. Somewhere, I ain't saying it was here, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I say that theories. I'm not saying it's here, here, or anywhere, but if you look here, we're all there. And so it's all about history. As we spread out, yeah, we got relatives and stuff wherever, and you can, you can talk about the change that happened. But the Bible, and the origin of it in Africa is not to say it's only about Ham. It's about all of us. It's about all of us. And it's not even color. I hope you get the point that I was saying. It's not one dark color. It was a spectrum even in Egypt. It was a spectrum of color. If you look at the hieroglyphs, it was a spectrum. And so we have to, I to say, we, in our minds, correct the notion that uh, one person can, can lay claim to Egypt uh, even though we know that they were majority, one thing. And there was a, 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 a post on, uh, I think I saved it, I don't know if I can open it or not. But there was a post that was made. Let me do this, and I got five minutes. When we think of Ethiopia, I'm going to skip here. This, we probably see something worse than this, right? We are, well, they want your money. And so they get your money, but these are Ethiopians. Now, I can say it's all of them. That first picture were Ethiopians. Yes. Just like I can come and say Americans. Right? You can go even in Rona. You go one section, it looks one way. You go to another section, it looks another way. You go one, we pick on West Virginians. We pick on them. They're all right. I'm sorry, y'all was missing. I can't forget that. I, I get them all the time, uh, but we do. And and but you can go to any part of any city, any hat. You can go to Vinton, just right in here, yeah. and go one street is one way, and go another street is another way. So if I want to do a video, you go. I watched a video. I used to. I used to couldn't stand. I got to get through. I used to go stand here in Channel 7 and Channel 10 and talk about Martinsville. I'm from Martinsville. Because they would go to the backside of the underside of Fayette Street in yes. video. Yes. But they would go to my, where I live, where my parents lived and all that yes. stuff, which ain't rich, but it ain't that. You know what I'm saying? And so if you want to invoke a certain impression, yes. 
You do it. Michelangelo drew, drew the angels and Jesus the way he wanted to invoke a certain impression upon those that were paying millions of dollars for the painting. We took it and said, this is it. And, it, and, and, it, and it's, not, it's not necessarily it. You can claim Jesus and you can envision him. I ain't going to say do like Ricky Bobby did and call him a little bit on. No, but you can, you can make <laughs> Jesus uh, in your mind who it is, but in truth, and say his truth, like Josh Gates did, is, is kind of stretching it to pull him your way. And leave him where he is, and let's celebrate where we came from and the diversity of who we are and what we all bring to the table. Now, These are the Ethiopians. The Bible said no man has seen God at any time. Right. Right? God. Right. As in yes. the, the, the spiritual. The spiritual. The spiritual side of it. We're yes. talking. And the people who only saw Jesus were the people who walked with him during that period of time. Mm -hmm. They certainly didn't have no cameras to go around and to Jesus. And nobody was sitting there paying a portrait of him either. Yeah. But not everybody again. But some people, these are Ethiopians. Yes. But I mean, I even had had it brought up to me one time about Adam too. You were talking about him before. Mm -hmm. The man was made from the dirt of the ground. Yes. Exactly. He probably, I, I forgot had, to say he probably that. had a color of, of fresh, healthy soil. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He just said that what, about a week or two ago. Yeah. 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 These are Ethiopians. This yeah. is the leadership. I think this is a picture of the leadership in yeah. Ethiopia. And so these are people. This is this is modern day. So you got to think there is some relevance to at the day and time of uh, the Bible that there were people of if we call because of the context that we in, people are calling. Okay. All right. I'm gonna wrap it up and we'll continue and look at some of these people and their contributions in the Bible. Um, Okay, I think I got most of everything. Okay, so we all come from that, but we've changed over time. We understand, we're not calling it, I don't want to make everything racial, but when you want to have dominance over people, you change things and make the story fit to you. If I ask a um, Vietnamese about the Vietnam War, they beat America. You know, an American about the Vietnam War. We did what we went over there to do. Oh man, I don't know. But you see what I'm saying? We'll make it pleasing to what suits our cause. They make it pleasing to what suits their cause. And that's what happens over the course of years. History is that uh, Africa was conquered more recently than Africa conquered recently. And so the Eurocentric view comes forward, but we can't allow they say allow, but we have to remind ourselves and stay true because the written order and the written history is what teaches us that things are the way they are. Now, I said I thought um, the Garden of Egypt was in Jerusalem. That's just me. Somebody's going to, I'll put this on YouTube. They'll probably correct me. The earliest bones were found in the lower Ethiopia, around the horn. You can believe that was the Garden of Eden. I mean, so I just see eastward, but then even Jerusalem is eastward. Babylon is eastward. So, who's right? I don't know. But we understand that that area is crucial to what everything else was. Until we accept that and understand that, then we will uh, never find true meaning of how the Bible speaks to all of us. All right. I feel like there's something I'm missing. I'm open up for any other comments or questions. Yes, ma'am. I think it's multicultural because you don't, I mean, today people see it how they see it. If you're black, you see Jesus black, and you see Jesus. If you're white, you see Jesus white. That's how it is in different churches. And I, I think it's not that. I think it's just they didn't see color then. Right. They saw culture then. And instead of color, today we see color, not culture. Right, right. And that's where we have to move away. We have to get into a culturally family. Because and, and, and it's not, sorry, it's not color, because we all bleed red, okay? Right. And we're all humans, so 
God doesn't see us as color. He sees us as in his own image. Mm -hmm. We all can trace no our roots. No matter what color you are. Right. We all can trace our roots um, back to Noah and through Noah back to uh, Adam and through Adam back to God. So it's not something that one person has control of or one color has yeah. control of. So cultural things. And so the next week we'll deal with some of the people and I'm going to go into some of the lineages to kind of let you know when we go through the lineages to a tie to a story that that um, you know you might see in a different way uh, when we go go on. All right? All right. I think a little bit of introduction. I, like I said, I like to keep it loose and, and informal. You can end the video. Keep it loose and informal. Um,